<laughs> get real. You Do you know. think you would have won if you'd have gone on it? Probably not. I don't know. I don't know. It's really hard. I mean, when I watched it afterwards, I thought it would, I would have gone mad because even in prison, I had books, I had television, you know, I had conversation. What I think was amazing to me was, you know, the lack of kind of, you know, um, stimulating conversation that went on. Hello, Alex Reed. You know, just, I thought he was lovely though. I thought he deserved to win, actually. I, I really early on thought he would win because I think that he went in there as the underdog. You know, no one really knew much about him. And actually, he was quite sweet. I mean, you're right. You know, there's things about him that you could maybe pull apart. But generally, I think he was quite nice. And Vinny was bullying him all the time. And, and you know, he, he reacted really brilliantly. There was this one part where, Vinny was being really nasty and he went to enjoy a cup of tea. And I thought we could all learn from him. You know, this is a really good way of diffusing a situation. You know, put the kettle on, you know. Yeah, I hated Vinny. <clears throat> I, yeah. um, but what did you what do you think of the whole kind of circus surrounding Katie Price and Alex Reed? Um, well, I've met her a few times and she's always been very sweet. And, you know, I mean, I know how easily it is to kind of be misinterpreted in the press or, or the media. And I don't know if she really does herself any favours when she's on telly. Because actually, in reality, she's very sweet and very polite and charming. She came to my house a couple of years ago and, um, you know, on that particular day, I think every single man in the world that I knew turned up, you know, <laughs> on the off chance. And she was really nice to everybody. She was really accommodating and very sweet, you know. But, yeah, I think when your life is about being yourself, you know, you're always going to come under kind of a lot of scrutiny. And I think it's difficult. It doesn't seem to be there's, a, you know, I can go home and... I don't have cameras in my house, you know, I can go home and switch off and go to bed and relax. But if you've constantly, if, that's, if your life is, you know, I mean, I've got my music, that's what I do. You know, if it was only just about me, I think it probably would drive me nuts. You know? Could you see yourself becoming, you know, uh, the new Elton John for helping people through or giving advice? Well, or? I think one of the things that, you know, I mean, you know, you know one of the things that you learn, I mean, I, I go to NA and, and then I do this 12 step program and it's all about helping people. Um, and, you know, I think in the past, you know, I was a bit like, oh, I don't want to be like that and I don't want to be sanctimonious. But actually, you know, one of the kind of principles of NA is that, you know, you, you keep it by giving it away. So actually it's quite an important part of the programme that you kind of, you know, not tell people what to do. Because obviously, you know, if someone's got a problem, they are the only person that can stop it. There's nothing you can actually physically do to stop anyone who's addicted. But you can kind of give them the message or you can show them where to go to get help. But basically it boils down to you stopping yourself. No mm. one can stop you. And it's really frustrating if you really care about somebody to watch them in that state, you know. I mean, obviously I realise now, you know, I, I used to take a very arrogant attitude towards it. It was like, well, it's my life to destroy, as, as Morris used to say, you know, in my own way. Um, but, you know, what I've realised is that you're always hurting someone. There's always somebody else or more than one person that's affected by what you're doing. With somebody like Amy Winehouse, if you <clears> could <throat> sort her out. Um, well, I mean, the only way you can really can influence people is by example, you know, um, is by just being clean and you're getting on with your life, um, you know, and uh, believe me, when I was addicted, there was so much procrastination, so much didn't get done, so much wasn't finished that, you know, it's, it's such a relief now to kind of just be getting on with my work and, you know, just enjoying, you know, I mean, you know, I kind of, what I say is like normal life, you know, is brilliant everything else is a bonus mm. so that's the difference it's funny saying that about procrastination because i think there's been a long-held myth that you know the rock and roll lifestyle you know you get more done it's more creative if you're on drugs well you have a, it doesn't really work like no, that does it? You, you have a lot of kind of what i call cocaine creativity but you don't actually it's get all anything. nonsense though it's isn't all it? crap <laughs> you don't get anything done and it's just you know frustrating you know but unfortunately until you don't know that until you're at the other side of it when you look back you think oh my god what have i been doing for five years are you not working with mark bronson i just worked with mark yeah How I just was did that? A yeah it was really good it was really good fun really nice he's lovely very sweet boy he's yeah very nice but what sort of style of music because obviously um, people do forget that he did ooey and they just think he does brass now yeah no right? it's um it's it was the song was written by mike snow and carl mm -hmm. from the libertines and mark so it's, it, you know, it's different to what I would normally do. It's quite culture clubby in a funny sort of way, but it's quite sexy, you know, because I'm normally quite funny about doing other people's songs, but I really like the song. The opening line are, we are wicked men looking for buckles to loosen. So that gives you an idea. <laughs> it's quite sexy. <laughs> You were photographed with Lindsay Lohan the other day. Just by you, accident. Oh, had you met her before? <laughs> no, What no. did you talk about? Just, well, actually, um, my friend Paul Starr died last year and he was, a really, he was really good friends with Lindsay. They worked together from when she was a kid. So I literally just wanted to say hello because of Paul, you know, um, 
just to say that you know he really loved her and you know he used to say really nice things about her. So I just wanted to meet her to talk about Paul. Really, it was that's all we did. You know, it was very brief. Because I thought she came across brilliant on Alan Carr's yeah, chat to Yeah, considering what the sort of things he was asking, I was like, oh my God. Because I know Americans aren't used to that kind of, you know, are you back on the cock? I mean, that's kind of not the sort of thing. My friends from America think British TV is outrageous. They can't believe how gay everyone is, you know.